Hi, welcome to TFIR Insights panel. And today we are going to talk about security in the cloud native world. And we have with us two guests, Artis Gore, CTO of Polyverse, and Yurlin Budurish, Chief Cybersecurity Officer at Cloudical. First of all, Yurlin and Archis, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Yerlin, uh, I would love to learn a bit more about Cloudical. Can you tell us a bit about what does the company do? We're growing in the last three years um, from being a consulting company in for cloud native um, environments um, into um, growing as uh, managed services for um, different uh, customers out there, be those on the public or uh, on the private cloud environments. Now let's talk about Vanilla Stack, uh, especially from a security perspective. Vanilla Stack, uh, first of all, it's based on Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is the bottom line uh, on Vanilla Stack. And from there, uh, we also implement um, as a core component uh, OpenStack. Um, in addition to that, Cloud Foundry. So this, I would say, are the three main core components uh, in, in, in the vanilla stack. Uh, we're trying to, to create a community out there, and this is going to be our goal, and we want to add there, especially when it comes to security solutions that are um, enforcing that stack, and we are going to have a holistic view on security and trying to have security by design and in depth. Let's talk about, from app developers' perspective, you know, uh, how involved should they be with security? Because earlier security was someone else's problem, it was not their problem. So, but in today's cloud native world, uh, talk about the, the, the kind of, you know, the involvement app developers or ops should have in security. Uh, and also what is usable security in that context? Sure. Um... Well, as you said, it's a kind of way of understanding responsibilities and sharing those responsibilities. Um, so it's um, that is where I think um, uh, DevOps or Sec DevOps um, or DevSecOps, you want to name it as you want, um, is going into the right direction. Um, even though it's not very easy to try and to make these different people that have different um, kind of opinions and mindsets um, to work together. Um, so this is, I think, something um, that especially also in, um, it's, it's difficult in big, in big companies, but it's easier to implement in, in, in smaller companies, kind of startups, because you would have this mentality of being agile, on, on taking responsibility, on, on being, um, on, on taking initiative and saying, well, I, I'm going to, to solve this issue. It's not uh, on my skill set, but I'm open to learn something new because this is kind of new technology and it's uh, you are always in a learning process. And by usability, of course, we know by um, by long history of security um, um, that, that we have uh, tried to implement and especially uh, the first, um, let's say, um, uh, tries were in uh, email security, in uh, communication, where we had uh, the PGP and the world said, okay, from now on, everyone is going to use uh, encrypted emails. So nobody is going to throw out their emails that are not encrypted anymore so that uh, no one can read them out there. But we are still struggling with that uh, because we haven't, like when this kind of concept has been developed, um, they have been developed not with uh, the broad, generous purpose in mind, and they have not taken, let's say, into consideration what are the strengths that we have as humans and what are the weaknesses that we have as humans. So this is where usable security comes into play and tries to analyze this, the weaknesses and, and the strengths that we as humans are have, and those try to, let's say, translate this into the technology and make the technology as effective, as usable as it is. Because if it's not usable, uh, people are going to find a way to work around it. Because as I said in the beginning, the developer's task is not security. So it's developing. So they, they have the pressure and they need to, to achieve their task. And that's where I think also to make their life easier because, you know, it's, their job is to write application, not to worry about all those security features. Uh, that's where you know uh, polyverse uh, polymorphing uh, comes to help them because it it takes a lot of burden off their shoulder. Uh, we have Archie's here, but I want to hear from you. Uh, how would you define polyverse? What they are doing and how do they help 
with your stack to make it more secure to help developers spend more time in, in writing application and less time in worrying about security at night. Yes, so that exactly is, as, as you stated, so th that is exactly the point. So um, uh, Polyverse, it, it, it's helping there. So first, it's um, going even one uh, level uh, deeper into our stack. So it's even securing the environment where the SAG is running. Um, so and, uh, this is something that the, the stack doesn't have for the moment or it's not, let's say, um, included into that stack. So it's adding to that uh, ecosystem. So it, it's building. So it's the, one of the, the main building blocks, uh, I, I would say. And I would see one of the uh, most important building blocks that you would have there um, if you understand what Polyverse uh, and polymorphing is doing. Uh, because it's it's trying to give you uh, a unique instance of an operating system uh, where uh, any attack out there that it might be a zero uh, um, day attack that it comes uh, new and that might be um, running in a specific um, distribution, um, this wouldn't scale anymore if you have an, a completely unique instance. So this would, would stop, so you would stop even zero day attacks uh, for that. So this is how this is adding into the security of the overall stacks. Can you talk a bit about the actual process at Polyverse that makes these projects more usable for you know the users of, let's say, vanilla stack? Yes, actually. So that, that's something that we invest almost a lot of time in. And in fact, polymorphing uh, came about due to that process. Um, so one of the things we do is we we kind of look at the end state that that a user needs to be or an environment needs to be, right? And then uh, you know again being a mathematician, uh, we look at the necessity, uh, the necessary conditions, and the sufficient conditions, right? And if you only have one or the other, uh, well, you need sufficiency more, right? Uh, most people what they do is they only do um, necessary conditions, right? But they may not be sufficient. Um, and you miss one, and the whole thing collapses, right? It's the same thing with signing, right? Like I, you know, it's like my pet peeve is people love to sign stuff, uh, but where are your private keys, right? Who has access to those private keys? And what does that signing mean? Like I can sign any blob of uh, any blob of bits, um, but signatures are an endorsement. So if your signature isn't saying this has been scanned, like if your signature isn't making a statement that signature has almost no use for me, right? You can sign all the stuff you want and I'll be like, great, I verified it. Um, and so what we tend to do is once we look at that end goal and we say, what are the necessary and sufficient conditions for the risk profile? And there's some mathematical model of like, you know, what is the expected value of risk or the expected value of loss? Um, then we kind of look at, we kind of like go talk to our customers and we say, well, let's get you from here to there. And I actually have, um, I have like uh, three metrics that I track. One is the cognitive load, which is how many things do they have to know about life in general before they can get from where they are to where they need to be. So when it, what I mean by that is like in terms of say signatures or encryption, um, ellip elliptic curves. Do they know that this one curve was broken? Do they know, do they have to know, right? If they have to know, that's a problem. And so then we note down like, okay, they have to know this, they have to know that, they have to know that. That has nothing to do with what they're touching, but they just have to have this context in their head. Uh, the second is how many actions do they have to take conclusively, right? Because every decision is a risk and we as humans get, it, it's a burden, right? Because if you, if you make that decision and you pull that lever in the wrong way or at the wrong time, then you are the person responsible. And this goes back to Aristotelian logic almost. Um, um, and so we look at all those decision points, right? Um, and, and then the third metric is um, the things that they have to do, which they shouldn't have had to know or had to do. And that's all the bullshit, like if it's expanding YAML, if it's expanding you know, large config XML files, whatever that might be. Um, and then we we kind of measure those things and we say, how much should they be expected to know? Uh, and so then we fill in that gap and we aggressively, opinionatedly fill in that gap, right? And so, and so polymorphing came about the same way. We actually had a customer who wanted a scrambling compiler, so we built one. 
And then we went to their, um, this was about four years ago, we went to their environment, we gave them the scrambling compiler, and we said, hey, you can now recompile Java and it stops these attacks. And we, we installed the JVM. And one day they, you know, I just watched them how they install Java and they, they're like, um, yum, install Java, dash Y, right? And I was like, holy cow, I can plug on the other side of that. Right? I can, you know, I can make that, I can collapse all this stuff into this one statement that just takes all those decisions away and we get them necessity and sufficiency uh, with one decision point. And so that's the process with which we build. So we, we have like three levels, which we call on the truck and in the lab, uh, actually two levels. And in the lab means it works. It means like if I went to a conference talk and I said, someone said, hey, does that work? And I'm like, yes, I have a machine that I know on which it worked the one time that I ran it. Uh, and then on the truck means, okay, here, take this, take two of these pills and call me in the morning. And you can't go wrong. You can't take three of them and you can't take one of them. And you just can't make a mistake. It's fail safe. We talked about vanilla stack. We talked about polymorphing. Let's talk about how you two are working together. Remember that the, the three pillars that I measured um, now, if, if a person was using Kubernetes, right, now they have one decision point, which is they have to know about this attack vector called drop attacks. They have to know how heap overflows work and how, you know, vtables are repointed and blah, 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 right? They just have to know this magically. Um, then they have to know what kinds of technologies are to be used against it and their efficacy and the success metrics. And, you know, a lot of math goes into that, right? And then they have to make this decision point of like running the install script for Polyverse, even though it's simple. And then they have to measure things like diversity and, you know, distribution and, you know, uniform distribution or, or a biased distribution. Um, and so they just have to know these things today, right? Even though we, we took away a lot of it, we didn't take away all of it. And how I see the partnership and why I'm excited is because we can now make that into a checkbox. Right? So we can, we can basically, in vanilla stack, we can make that one checkbox and we can take all of this. You have to know all that context. Now, here's the thing. You know, you've known us for a while. You can, you can peel our onion all day long, right? We can keep going deeper and you can, we will go into the depths when we have to. But for most of the customers, they can start by checking the box. Yeah, and uh, the, as your discussion earlier, also that you know uh, these cloud native technologies are already too complicated, and we should we we don't want to make security another complicated piece in there. So the easier it is, and I think that's what a lot of open source technologies and cloud uh, technology that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to democratize how we consume technologies because uh, the the speed at which we have to innovate and stay ahead, we cannot waste all the time in in, in patchwork and plumbing. So the more uh, companies like Cloudical or Polyverse take away that burden, the easier it is for app developer to focus on their core uh, goal, which is write better apps. Uh, Arches, uh, Yurlin, thank you so much for talking to me uh, today about uh, security in the cloud native space and also the work that um, um, uh, Cloudical is doing with Vanilla Stack and Polyverse is doing it with Polymorphing. And I would love to talk to you guys again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here.